Welcome to this week's Tech Sunday Fun Day. Grab a tea, a coffee, or your beverage of choice, because this week is an AI-infused, tech-filled, little bit of everything kind of week. In fact, there's so much to cover, I've had to add an honourable mentions list at the end of the video. But don't worry, there'll be links to everything in the description below. Let's kick it off with a new updated Steam Deck. The Steam Deck, made by Valve, has been making waves in the gaming industry over the last year or so. It's essentially a portable gaming PC that you can play most of your Steam library on. It was and is very impressive, but it had its flaws, namely a noisy fan, a mediocre screen, and not so great battery life. A year later, and the portable gaming landscape is completely different. The Steam Deck now has competition, such as the ROG Ally and the Lenovo Legion Go, which are both Windows-based devices, which offer more power than the Steam Deck and better screens, for not much more money. However, their blessing and their curse is Windows, which is plagued with issues in this gaming form factor. SteamOS on the Steam Deck, on the other hand, still offers a more user-friendly, works-out-the-box experience. Anyway, out of the blue, Valve announced the Steam Deck OLED, a revised and refined version of the Steam Deck. This isn't the Steam Deck 2, but it is the definitive Steam Deck experience. The headline upgrade is the OLED screen. This addresses the biggest flaw with the original Steam Deck, which was its mediocre LCD screen, which didn't go very bright, and the colours always felt a little washed out. The new OLED screen, on the other hand, bumps up the brightness to 600 nits, up from 400, or 1000 nits for HDR content. Additionally, you get the beautiful deep blacks and vibrant colours of an OLED screen. The screen is just the tip of the iceberg. The updated Steam Deck has a larger battery and more efficient AMD chipset. This combined offers a 30 to 50% increase in battery life. It also has faster Wi Fi. It's easier to repair, has faster memory, has Bluetooth 5.3, better speakers and improved controls, and it's slightly lighter. Otherwise, the performance remains much the same. This isn't a Steam Deck 2, but rather a quality of life improvement over the original Steam Deck, which makes sense because the Steam Deck is only a year and a half old. My excitement here is an 8 out of 10. While it would have been nice to see a Steam Deck 2, I think Valve made the right call, taking an already excellent device and giving it a list of meaningful upgrades. The new screen itself will automatically make every game look better, and the more efficient chip will allow you to play for longer. It's available to order November 16th from £479 or $549. Elon Musk has launched a new AI chatbot called Grok on X, formerly known as Twitter. Grok is a competitor to ChatGPT and is intended to answer questions with humour and sarcasm. Elon Musk showcased this humour on a recent tweet, or whatever it's called now, asking it for a recipe for cocaine, and it replies sarcastically. Just like ChatGPT and other generative AIs like Bard, it's prone to factual errors, so always take the response with a pinch of salt. My excitement level for this is a 3 out of 10. I just don't trust Elon Musk to use AI responsibly, I just see this as being one of those AI chatbots that could go very wrong. But I would love to be proven wrong. Grok is currently in beta on X and will later be available to paying subscribers. You might not have heard of them yet. They're not a mainstream name yet, but Humane could potentially be the next Apple. They're ready to change the mobile computing industry forever. They just announced their latest device, the Humane AI Pin which is a wearable device powered by generative AI. This is a standalone device that is designed to replace your smartphone. It runs a custom OS called Cosmos, which has your very own personal AI powered by ChatGPT. The primary means of interaction with the AI pin is voice, which allows you to send messages to friends and family, or provide live translation when in a foreign country or simply just searching for something like you would on a traditional browser. Supplementing the voice interactions, the AI pin also has a small built-in projector, which projects information onto your hand. For example, what music is currently playing. You can also interact with the visual interface with gestures. My excitement level for the Humane AI pin is a 10 out of 10. They're boldly going where no other company has gone and they're offering an alternative vision of what the future of mobile computing could be. In this case, a small, unobtrusive, screen-free device that allows us to stay connected to the world, but without commanding our constant attention. 
By stripping back the technology to something simple, where we can interact with our voice, could lead to healthier tech habits and more meaningful experiences without a screen getting in the way. Or it could just be the beginning of an AI revolution that takes over humanity. Let's see. The AI pin will be available in the US from November 16th. It will cost $699 and will require a $24 monthly fee. It will come to other markets in the future. ChatGPT, the AI we know and love, is getting some nice upgrades. OpenAI just released GPT-4 Turbo, which can now accept a much larger amount of text as input, up to 300 pages of text. So you could summarize a whole novel if you wanted to. It's also cheaper to run for developers. Additionally, GPT-4 Turbo also supports images, text-to-speech, and also offers DALI-3 integration to generate images. Alongside GPT-4 Turbo, they announced custom GPTs, which are tailored towards your specific needs, and you don't need to know how to code to create them. You could have a personal assistant GPT, you could have a sous chef GPT, or a music recommendation one, or one that just explains board games. The possibilities are endless. My assignment level for this is an 8 out of 10. The idea of custom GPTs really excites me and brings us closer to a future of having personal AIs to the point where they're actually useful in helping us on a day-to-day -day basis. Custom GPTs are now available in beta and you'll need a ChatGPT Plus subscription to make use of it. Orbiki are probably most well known for their clever little key holder, but they make pretty nice tech accessories too. Their latest product, the Hybrid Work Duo, aims to take your office on the go. The Hybrid Laptop Sleeve is a beautifully made laptop sleeve for MacBook Pro 14 and 16. It's made of vegan leather and recycled woven fabric. What's unique to this sleeve is that it folds out to provide a desk mat, so you have a surface area to use your laptop, along with an area that can be used as a mouse pad or just somewhere to lay your accessories. My assignment for this is a 6 out of 10. I really appreciate the premium materials and unique design. I think this is perfect for digital nomads or for people that work from cafes regularly and just want to improve their working environment. It's available now starting from $80 or £70. Sony just can't stop releasing cameras. I've lost track of all of the cameras they've announced in the last year or so. Well, their latest camera, the Sony A9 III, is their latest in the line of professional mirrorless cameras. A major new feature is the inclusion of global shutter, which exposes all pixels at once to eliminate rolling shutter distortion in both stills and video. This allows for impressive specifications like 4K at 120fps video with no crop. It also has a 24.6 megapixel sensor. The A9 III aims to continue the A9 series focus on speed over high resolution or extreme low light ability. A9 III supports CF Express Type A cards as well as SD cards. My excitement for this is a 7 out of 10. I am by no means a camera tech nerd and I don't have the expertise to explain global shutter, but I appreciate that for photographers and for videographers, Having the inclusion of Global Shutter will be a huge upgrade. If you want to find out more about this and why it's such a big deal, I've left an article in the description below. It's available to order now for $5,999 or £6,099. FigJam is a collaborative whiteboarding app made by Figma. It's a tool that I've personally used quite a lot. It can be used with teams or clients for running workshops or just as a personal brainstorming tool. Figma has just announced FigJam AI, which allows you to automatically generate templates. If you're working in a team, you could generate a template for weekly retros or brainstorming activities. For me, the most exciting, impactful, and useful feature of FigJam AI is just organizing all of the post-its on a FigJam board. I used to facilitate workshops on tools like FigJam, and one of the most painful things was having to organize all of the post-its and sort of group them together by themes. But now with FigJam AI, it can do all of that for me and even come up with a title and a name for all these different groups. Honestly, such a time saver. Additionally, at the end of a brainstorming session or a workshop, FigJam AI can then summarize the key takeaways and next steps. My excitement level for this is a nine out of 10. For those that use online whiteboarding tools for teams or hosting client workshops, this is going to be a huge time saver. 
or for personal use, I can see myself using this just to collate my ideas and make sense of them. It's available to use right now. Mediatek are a lesser known competitor to Qualcomm, who make the insanely popular Snapdragon processors. Not to be outdone by its competitors, Mediatek has announced its latest Dimensity 9300 chip, which competes with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 smartphone chips. What sets the Dimensity 9300 chip apart is that the CPU consists of only high performance cores, whereas most other competitors will use efficiency cores as well for less intensive tasks to help supplement battery life. According to Mediatek, this approach doesn't harm efficiency, and battery life will still be better than previous generations. Allegedly, it outperforms Snapdragon 8 Gen 3's performance. GPU performance is also boosted with 46% greater performance than previous generations. Just like any other chip nowadays, it's designed for generative AI, allowing for fast image generation and support for very large language models. My excitement level for this is a 6 out of 10. Honestly, smartphone chips don't really excite me anymore. But what does excite me is competition, and if Mediatek can bring some much needed competition to Snapdragon, then that's a good thing. Backbone arguably makes the best gaming controllers for smartphones, and they're backed up by an incredible app that acts as a gaming hub. Now they're offering a second generation version of the Backbone game controller. It would have been nice to see these arrive in time for the new iPhone, as they would have been the perfect addition. The new Backbone one has a better fit especially with phones getting larger and having more substantial camera bumps. There's also magnetic adapters to expand compatibility with more smartphones. The D-pad is also updated to be more responsive and comfortable. There's a new carrying case to keep your controller protected on the go too. My excitement level for this is a 6 out of 10. It's a much needed revision to the original Backbone 1, which is now struggling to fit some of the larger phones, especially with larger camera bumps. It seems like an ideal companion for the new USB-C iPhones, especially the Pro ones, which are being marketed as the future of game consoles. It's available now for $99 or £99. Okay, that was a lot. Now onto the honourable mentions, which we will speed through, but I'll have links in the description below. The Chroma Console is a multi-effects pedal for hologram electronics that features four versatile effects modules, gesture-based automation, and the unique ability to rearrange effects in the signal chain. Samsung has announced the S Pen Creator Edition stylus, designed for artists, which provides more precision and a better grip than the standard S Pen, and competes with the Apple Pencil. Meze Audio has announced the Empyrean 2 headphones, which feature refined planar magnetic drivers and interchangeable earpads for comfort and sound customization. Google Maps on Android Auto has received a visual redesign that aims to make navigation information easier to read while driving by displaying key details more prominently. The Moment Pro Camera app for iPhone received an update that adds support for Apple ProRes video codecs, log recording, Dolby Vision HDR video, and reduced latency while switching cameras. Nintendo is releasing a new Smash Bros. themed Switch OLED bundle. I wouldn't buy it though, because a new Switch is just on the horizon. Apple has announced updates to Final Cut Pro for Mac and iPad, with new features like automatic timeline scrolling on Mac, voiceover recording on iPad, and performance improvements for Apple Silicon Macs. LG has announced two 45-inch ultra-wide curved gaming monitors, but are smaller and cheaper than existing large ultra-wide options. Okay, so that was your jumbo-sized tech digest for the week. What tech announcement excited you the most? For me, it was a Humane AI pin, the Steam Deck OLED, and Figma AI. The Humane AI pin offers a unique vision onto the future of mobile computing. The Steam Deck OLED addresses the biggest flaws with the original Steam Deck, while introducing many other refinements too. And finally, FigJam AI will streamline whiteboarding online apps, and acts as a huge time saver. Anyway, that's all folks, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.